Hello and welcome to this video where I will show you how to create a project in Wappler version 3.3. This tutorial is aimed at total newbies to web development. The assumption is that there no web server running on the local machine and that there is no server side coding language going to be used. If this assumption does not hold true for you, then you probably know more about web development than my targeted audience. Please keep this in mind when viewing the video. When we create a new project in Wappler, it wants to know what the site is called, and where to put it. In principle, the destination can be anywhere on your local system. The project is all about an African animal called the aardvark, hence the name of the project. To make sure that we can find our projects, it is best to keep them in one place. For this purpose, we create a folder, called www. This folder can be anywhere when no server-side coding is required. Inside the www folder, we create a folder for our project, called aardvark. The following input fields refer to hosting types, server model and git repositories. For now, we will ignore these. I will come back to these in tutorials for intermediate users of Wappler. Saving the project creates an index page which includes the required frameworks. Select app in the app structure panel. Then click the plus sign in the canvas. This opens a window containing element blocks. Here we choose navigation and one of the examples. This places a navigation bar at the top of the page. Click the down arrow on the canvas and add a main element. This will hold the main content of the page. While we are here, some notes about the main element. The main element can only be used once in a document. Main doesn't contribute to the document's outline, that is, unlike elements such as body and headings, main doesn't affect the DOM's concept of the structure of the page. It's strictly informative. Click the down arrow and choose the Blocks tab. Choose Footer in one of the examples. Now we are confronted with an annoying outcome of our page. The footer hugs the main element halfway down the page. We could rectify this using Bootstrap CSS classes. But this would mean that we would have to do this for each and every page that we create. I will show you a site-wide solution. Open style.css and copy the code that I have placed under this video, and paste it into the CSS document. To explain, all block level elements adjust their heights to its content unless design rules specify a set height. If the content covers half the page, then the HTML, as well as the body element will have a height of half a page height. We want the footer to be at the bottom of the page. Lines 2 and 8, set the height. Different flexible units, percent and VH, have been used to satisfy the interpretations by the different browsers. Line 3 stops the content from jumping when a page with a scroll bar is shown after a page without a scroll bar and vice versa. Line 6 and 7 changes the display mode of the body to a flex container with a vertical or column direction. Line 11 tells the main element to grow the full available height, or 1 not to shrink, or 0, and to keep the natural dimensions, or auto. Save the CSS document and close it. Back in the index page, we need to attach the style sheet to the document. Go to the styles panel, select the plus icon and attach CSS. Browse to the style file and select. Now we see that the footer has been relegated to the bottom of the page. Let's add a bit of content to the page. In app structure, choose main. Then click the plus sign on the canvas, Choose the Blocks tab in one of the examples and call to action. Click the down arrow and under the Blocks tab choose an example from the content category. Save the document, and we are done with the index page. There are two other pages that need to be created. Under the Project folder, click the plus icon. In the pop-up window, enter about as the name of the page, no file extension and save. Repeat for the contact page. Select the About page. Make sure that app has been selected and click the plus sign on the canvas. Choose Navigation.
Add a main element. Add a footer. Attach the style sheet. Choose the main element and click the plus button. Add a container or row in a column. Inside the column, add a title. Before changing the title, click the refresh icon, then double click the title and change it to suit. Save the page. Repeat the process for the contact page. Back in the index page, I'll add the links for the menu items. Select the menu item and in the properties panel browse to the link page. Repeat the process for each of the other menu items. Save the file when done. Select the About page and repeat the process linking the menu items. But wait, Wappler has a much better way of doing this. After all, Wappler is marketed as a time saver for developers. Go back to the index page. Select the header element and click the, move to include file icon. Select, include file. Because this is the first include file, we will first create an includes folder. Selecting the includes folder, we can enter the file name and extension. In this case I have called it navigation.html. In hindsight I should have called it header.html. Never mind. I tend to add a leading underscore to partials and include so that I can distinguish them from normal files. After saving the file, we see that the header has been replaced by the include file. We also see the file in the includes directory in the project folder. Save both the include file and the index page. Select the about page and remove the header. Then add the include file before the main element. Link the file to the include file. Saving the page shows the navigation bar as before. Repeat the process for the contact page.
If I now go back to the index page and turn the preview mode on. This turns the canvas into a full-blown browser. We now see our website in action. I'll now quickly turn the footer into an include file and spare you my commentary. There we have it. Sadly we have come to the end of this video. My name is Ben Plesier and my robot friend, Billy supplied the voiceover. I hope that you enjoyed and see you for the next video in the series.